Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain the transporter. This movie tells the story of an ex-Special Forces operator who runs a private business as a transporter, a hired criminal whose job is to transport cargo, packages, and passengers without question. Playing by the rules, he is the best in the business and he has never broken the rules, until Frank is hired by an American criminal to deliver a special package. Can he carry out his task this time as a transporter? Let's find out in the transporter. The transporter. The transporter begins by showing a man named Frank Martin. Frank is a former special operations soldier and now works as a driver, as well as a highly skilled mercenary. Frank now lives in southern France and has the nickname the transporter, according to his profession. Frank is preparing to carry out his duties to deliver three men from a private bank to a place, according to the agreed contract. It turns out that the clients who hired Frank as a driver were armed bank robbers. Frank didn't seem bothered by that, as he would just carry out his duties and receive payment as agreed. Therefore, Frank strictly applies three rules when he's transporting, never change deals, never ask for names, and never open packages. Since the bank robbers were four in number, which was against the agreement, because Frank was told that they would only carry three people, Frank refused to take them out of there. The leader of the robbers then pointed a gun at Frank, threatening him. But Frank remained relaxed and stuck to the contract they had agreed to. Frank then explained that the extra weight will affect his precisely planned getaway, so Frank refuses to drive. Because their time was running out and the police were about to arrive, the leader finally killed one of his men and pushed him out of the car. After everything was according to the agreement, Frank immediately stepped on the gas from there. As a professional driver, Frank is able to pass through narrow streets and also penetrate obstacles to avoid being chased by the police. After Frank managed to get the robbers to their destination safely, the leader, who was very satisfied with Frank's performance, then offered Frank more money to take them to Avignon. But Frank refused the offer and chose to return to his home on the French Riviera. Arriving at the house, Frank immediately cleaned his car and changed his car's license plate. Frank turns out to have a secret cupboard containing several fake number plates that he often uses while doing his job. Frank then watches a news broadcast on television about the arrests of the robbers who are his ex-clients, who try to escape elsewhere with their amateur driver. After that, a local police inspector named Tarconi came to Frank's house and asked him about his black BMW, which was exactly the same as the car the robbers used when they fled the robbery scene. But having no real evidence against Frank, Tarconi finally leaves. Not long after, Frank then received a call from a prospective client who needed his services. That evening, Frank met the man and made a deal with him to deliver a 50-pound package to an American man named Darren Bedencourt. Frank asked for a fee of $40,000 up front, and the man agreed. The next day, the package was loaded into Frank's trunk. As he was about to change the flat tire and take the spare tire out of the trunk, Frank saw the package he was carrying was moving. Realizing that someone was inside, Frank breaks the third rule, opens the package, and finds a Chinese woman bound and gagged. Frank then gave the woman a drink and continued on the way. But in the middle of the road, the woman banged on the trunk of the car, and when Frank opened the gag in her mouth, the woman named Lai told Frank that she needed to pee. Feeling sorry for her, Frank then pulled the woman out of the trunk so she could pee. But apparently, Lai tried to escape, so Frank was forced to take decisive action to catch the woman back. However, when Frank was about to take Lai back to the car, two police officers caught sight of him, so Frank was forced to paralyze the policemen and put them in the trunk, along with Lai who fainted. After a long journey, Frank finally arrived at his destination and delivered the package to Betancourt as promised. When Betancourt asked if Frank had opened the package, Frank lied by saying he had not. When he was about to go home, Betancourt offered Frank another job to deliver a suitcase which happened to be in the same direction as the return road to Frank's residence, so Frank agreed. On the way, Frank stopped briefly to eat and buy drinks for the policemen who were in his trunk. As Frank was about to get back into the car, suddenly his car exploded, killing the policemen who were in his trunk. It turns out that in the briefcase Betancourt gave him, hidden a bomb meant to kill Frank in order to silence the man regarding the package he was delivering. An enraged Frank is then determined for revenge, and returns to Betancourt's place where Frank then kills and injures several of Betancourt's henchmen. Frank then steals one of the cars that were there to escape, only to find Lai tied up and gagged in the back seat of the car. In the middle of the road, Frank then lowered Lai in a state still bound and gagged. But not long after, Frank, who felt sorry for her, came back and picked up Lai. Frank then took her to his house, gave her food and a place to rest for the night, 
and asked Lai to leave tomorrow. That night, when Frank goes to bed, Lai secretly searches Frank's belongings and learns that Frank is a former Air Force soldier and a highly trained soldier. Lai also thought that Frank was actually a good person. Meanwhile, Bedencourt visits one of his men who is still alive at the hospital to ask who attacked his residence. After learning that Frank was the one who had attacked his residence, Bedencourt killed his men so as not to reveal any information about him and his illegal activities to the police. The next day, when Lai prepares breakfast for Frank, Tarconi returns to Frank's house, suspecting Frank after his car was found on fire in a place not far from Frank's residence, and the bodies of two policemen were found in his trunk. Frank then said that yesterday he did go to the area and claimed that his car had been stolen while he was there. Tarconi didn't believe him and asked Frank again. But then, Lai appears and supports Frank's alibi, by introducing herself as a chef and also Frank's new girlfriend. Not finding any evidence that could link Frank to what happened to his car, Tarconi finally left Frank's house. After Tarconi left, Frank immediately asked Lai to leave his house and get out of his life. However, shortly after, Frank's house was attacked by Bedencourt and his men with indiscriminate gunfire. Frank immediately took Lai to hide in a safe place. Bedencourt then ordered his men to fire missiles, intending to destroy Frank's house and also Frank and Lai who were in it. Frank and Lai barely managed to escape when the missiles were fired at them, before they finally made it to the underwater passage where Frank had prepared his diving gear for an emergency, and swam to the nearest safe house. The next day, Frank and Lai are called to the police station to appear before Inspector Tarconi, and ask about what happened to Frank's house. Tarconi asks Frank about the person who destroyed Frank's house and Frank's involvement with that person. But Frank argues that when the incident took place, he was swimming in the sea with Lai, so he didn't know who did it. Tarconi again didn't fully believe Frank's words. However, his interrogation session had to be interrupted when one of his men informed him that the police commissioner wanted Tarconi to see him immediately. When Tarconi had left his office, Lai took the opportunity to access Tarconi's computer to find information about Bedencourt, and then shared the information with Frank. After that, Frank and Lai were allowed to leave because Tarconi did not have enough evidence to keep them at the police station any longer. Frank, already presumed dead by Bedencourt, wants to put an end to all of this, in which he intends to rebuild his villa and start a new life, then advises Lai to do so instead of getting further involved with Bedencourt and putting their lives at risk again. Lai then revealed that Bedencourt was a human trafficker with 400 Chinese trapped in shipping containers, including Lai's father and her siblings. Bedencourt would take them into slavery and sell them. Hearing this, Frank felt sympathy for Lai and decided to help Lai save her family. After that, Lai and Frank went to Bedencourt's office. Arriving there, Frank immediately hit Bedencourt and pointed a gun at him, while Lai searched for files regarding the container holding 400 Chinese, including her family. Bedencourt then reveals to Frank that Lai's father, Kwai, is also a human trafficker and Bedencourt's partner in crime. Frank thought that Lai had tricked him. However, after Kwai arrived with his henchmen, Lai instead pointed a gun at her father. But because of being threatened, she finally obeyed her father's orders and put down her weapon. Kwai's henchmen manage to subdue Frank, where Betancourt then tells Frank that there are only 395 Chinese in the container. On the other hand, Tarconi, who finds out about Betancourt from his computer, which shows information about the man, rushes to Betancourt's office and finds Frank unconscious. When Tarconi arrives, Kwai and Betancourt accuse Frank of kidnapping Lai and trying to blackmail them. Tarconi then ordered his men to arrest Frank and imprison him. After Frank regained consciousness, Tarconi urged the man to tell him what had happened. Frank then explained everything to Tarconi and told him about the hundreds of Chinese people held in containers and about to be traded as slaves by Bedencourt and Lai's father. Realizing that Frank will not be limited by a search warrant and Frank will be able to solve the case faster than the police, Tarconi agrees to help Frank escape from prison and poses as a fake hostage then frees him. That evening, Frank, who had everything ready, then tracked Betancourt and his gang to the docks in Marseille, where they would load the containers onto trucks. However, Frank was found out, so a fierce fight and a shootout between Frank and Betancourt's henchmen were inevitable. In an attempt to stop the truck by jumping on it, Frank runs into trouble, and Betancourt's men managed to knock him out. Frank then had to deal with Kwai's henchmen, who ganged up on Frank with sharp weapons, and also Betancourt's best fighter who was very difficult to beat. By exerting all his fighting abilities, Frank was finally able to overthrow them all. But then, Betancourt sends his armed men, forcing Frank to flee by throwing himself into the sea. After that, Frank steals an old car and tries to chase the truck carrying the container. But when morning came, 
the old car broke down on a remote country road. Frank, who saw a small airplane flying towards a farm, then rushed after it. Frank then pointed a gun at the plane owner and ordered the man to fly him onto the highway, following a truck carrying containers. After getting close enough, Frank then parachuted and landed right on top of one of the trucks. Frank quickly knocked the truck driver down, but Betancourt was there and tried to stop Frank. After a long and fierce fight, Frank finally manages to kill Betancourt by throwing him out of a moving truck, as well as some of his henchmen. After regaining control of the truck, Frank then pulled the container truck to safety. But just as Frank is about to get out of the truck, Pui points a gun at him and leads Frank to the edge of a cliff, intending to kill Frank to cover up his crime. Even Kwai also ordered his men to kill Lai, because his daughter had disobeyed his orders and favored the people who would become slaves. However, Frank is finally saved by Lai who reluctantly shoots her father, killing him. After that, Inspector Tarconi arrived with the police, and they rushed to save the people trapped in the two containers, then congratulated Frank on his work. The film ends.